So that's it. Uh, hello, hello, is this Mark? Yes, speaking. Hello. Hello, this is Dustin Wellness from KMSU Radio. Hi, Dustin. How are you doing? How are you? Things are great, and I'm here with my co-host, Ton. Hey there, how are you doing? Tom, I'm <laughs> fine, and you? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Okie doke. All right, well, uh, ask you first off, how, how did you end up joining up with Crocus? Uh, it's a long story. I came to Switzerland... Well, to start off, I was born on, on, on an island, on the island of Malta, Malta, in the Mediterranean. And uh, at a certain young age, I had reached all I could reach, so I wanted to go, go further and be a professional singer. And went to London and spent a year in London and then flew over to Switzerland because I made some uh, good contacts and uh, joined the band called T, T E A. That was my first professional uh, band where we wrote our own songs, we recorded, produced with the Scorpions uh, producer Dieter Dirks up in Cologne in Germany. And uh, that lasted around, uh, well, six years or so. And during that time, uh, I got to know Crocus in their second formation uh, with Chris Von Rohr on vocals and Tommy Kiefer, Kiefer, uh, yeah, may he rest in peace. Uh, he, he was a great guitar player. Um, you know, during the days when we were doing our last tour with T and uh, we took Crocus as supporting act on the road with us. So I got to know the guys, and after we uh, decided to go, go our own ways with T, I went to uh, back to London, and uh, then I got this phone call from Chris Von Rohr asking me if I would join the band and so on. And But in the meantime, I had this other band called Easy Money going, and we were close to signing a deal and so on. And then I, I did this audition with Rainbow, and that didn't work. And uh, I then Chris called again, so I said, but just send me some, uh, some stuff from the band so I can listen to how you guys sound and so on again, refresh my memory, and let me think about it. So then the band went on tour with their singer, uh, Henry Fries. Freeze. <laughs> it's spelled like French fries, you know. <laughs> And uh, yeah, then when they got back, Chris called me again and I said, well, guy, you know, I'd like to come over and jam with you guys and let's take it from there. So I flew over to Switzerland, spent the weekend there and we jammed and jammed and went, uh, you know, up on the mountains and so on, had, had some fun together. And after that, I signed a contract for a year, a trial thing just to see how things work out and during that year we toured we went into the studio recorded metal rendezvous and that shot straight to number one here in the album charts and it it was uh, all over the charts in europe and we even had some feedback our first ever feedback from the usa <laughs> so um i guess you know, I have done the right thing, and that's why I'm still in Crocus today. Yeah, I guess uh, you probably had that year contract renewed after that success then. Oh, yeah, of course. Then, <laughs> then we had a more serious contract with the record company and an internal one with, uh, within the band and so on. And, and then, um, well, we had this Swiss management at the time, and later on we changed to... American management and signed a worldwide deal and uh, it became like uh, you know a great great career for a while <laughs> yeah you know well around that time after the success it seems like you guys were putting out albums and touring non-stop for years yeah what, what yeah, was yeah, that we... like around that time I mean was it heavy duty after a while or did you kind of get burned out or well, uh, when we started off, we felt like we had hit nirvana. You know, for us, uh, coming to the USA was like a chance to release 
our emotions, our musicianship was appreciated. I mean, not that we weren't appreciated here by our fans in Europe, but the whole attitude uh, within the business plus the, the country itself, you know, not having to go through borders and change your money. Uh, we had we had different currencies in Europe at the time before it became the European Union. Now we have the euro. But, you know, in the USA, it was always the dollar, the green buck, you know. So we got used to a little bit of the American way of life. Although we were living a part of the way of life that even Americans dreamed of, lots of young ones, you know, would come on the bus, we'd take them on the bus and show them around backstage and everything, and they'd say, oh, you've got life I, I dream of having myself, you know. And, yeah, we we toured and no end, you know. It was like we wrote songs, went into pre-production, went into the studio, recorded the album, did the promo, and then went on promo tours all over Europe and the USA. So we very much were living out of a suitcase. And, um, of course, uh, you live for the concert every day, and you, you live for meeting new people in radio stations. In those days, the USA was full of rock radio stations and um, generally feeling welcome and, you know, and praised, you know, feeling great, you know, actually. Yeah. Except for the time you had to, to spend traveling and waiting for sound checks, waiting for this waiting for that. There's a lot of time which you spend waiting and you never get get to go home and um, water your plants and uh, play with your cat or dog or whatever, you know, or drive your own car. And so there's a little, uh, little bit of homesickness that comes into it every now and then uh, when you're out on the road that long. And, uh, well, luckily I didn't have any kids back then. And uh, my wife used to fly in and stay on the road for a few weeks. But yes, towards the end, it, it was a mistake, a big mistake, I think, from the management and the record company and all the people who were kind of around us, who instead of seeing that the band was uh, in need of a break, we kept being pushed on, you know, and that broke the camel's back, you know. Yeah. And in the end, we were in the in the USA so much that we even lost our Euro European roots. We became like we started to blow in the wind a little bit. And that's why there came a sudden change in uh, in our image. Uh, we, we kind of jump, jumped on the glamour, melodic rock bandwagon, which Crocus should never have done. <laughs> in those days, yeah. and uh, th that wasn't good for the band. And, uh, of course, you know, the founder member of the band uh, was no longer with us at that stage, I regret saying, um, because, you know, Chris was pretty much the mentor. I mean, he started the band in the very beginning. Right. And, uh, f well, Fernando didn't have the that kind of anchorage, didn't give us the anchorage we needed, the musical anchorage, you know, the the, the roots, the bass, um, didn't give give me that to create uh, new songs on, you know, to sing on, for example, in my case. So that's why I'm so happy that Chris is back in the band now and that we're back to the original, almost original members of 1982 anyway. Right. And... Um, Right now we're back at writing. We're in the writing stage, and we deliver in October, and we take it from there. But it's sounding good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with the uh, kind of getting burned out, like you were saying, and then you left the band in the late 80s. 88, we had a big uh, squabble. Well, you know, I a certain business, big dis actually big dis business disagreement and we were burnt out and this didn't help. 
So in the summer of 88, I considered myself already out of the band after the last gig. We had this meeting in Boston, and that was the last thing. And after that, I uh, never looked back and went into writing a solo album. Well, I took a break first, of course, and then started writing songs with this guitar player who was an old friend of mine, um, Vic Versa. And um, that's when I decided to stay in Basel, and I've been here since then, since ni- 1989. <laughs> wow. I've been here, yeah. And and today, Basel, football, the football team plays against Munich tonight. And, and this is the first time ever that a Swiss football team got so far um, at all in the uh, European League. Well, we'll make sure so, not uh, to keep you on the phone too long, then we don't want to interrupt the I game. I don't know. Well, we're going to eat first, and the match starts in about, uh, let's see, three hours. So we've got plenty of time, but okay. <laughs> I know you don't want to talk for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, the beer is in the free fridge, you know, and it's going to be great. And yeah, I have a, I have a good feeling, although Munich is a very, very good team, hard team to beat. And um, But Basel have come a long way. And it's incredible. <laughs> they are the top Swiss team since a few years now. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll uh, I want to go back a little bit and ask you, uh, when you guys were in the early days when you joined the group, you were compared to um, ACDC quite a lot. Did you feel that that was uh, fair for people to, to assume that, or did that upset you at all? Or Well, in the beginning, having had a background of having been writing songs like I did with the band T, for example, one always has to look into the, into the background and, and, and see where, where my sentiments were coming from when I said that I didn't think it was fair. And because basically Crocus sounds like ACDC sometimes, but not all the time. And Crocus has written songs that ACDC would never dare to write because it's not up their street. Um, Crocus has always offered more melody and a, a, a wider spectrum, if you like, of music in the albums. And um, we even went metal sometimes. I mean, if you listen to Headhunter, yeah, there's the ballad Screaming in the Night, which is our top ballad. ACDC only wrote one ballad in their lives, which, which was uh, sung by uh, Bon Scott, rest in peace. And um, that's right on. And that's a great, really great music uh, blues ballad. You know, and um, of course, I I see the reason why they don't need to write or perform ballads because uh, that's probably uh, you'd see Angus Young yawning for the first time because he's so <laughs> full of beans, and it's so great to watch him. And, and they're just a great band, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, but however, you know what disturbed me was is that. Every every artist, whether he's a painter or, or musician or actor, likes to have his establish his own persona and be respected for what he is, whether it's more or less. And that was my attitude. I thought, well, you know, shit, I'm not Bon Scott. I don't. Uh, if I sound like him, sometimes it's coincidental. And. Um, well, we're not ACDC, you know, but uh, it didn't mean w- I was trying to put ACDC or Bon, bon Scott down with my statements. You know, I never, never ever would dream of that. In fact, uh, I respect them all. I respect uh, Brian Johnson as well, and I wish them a long life uh, yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, is it true? I read this that... Um when Bon Scott did die, were, were you offered the job to replace him in ACDC? Is that true? Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I wasn't offered the job 100%. I was asked if I would be interested to audition, you know. Yeah. And and at that time, I was happy as a pig in shit, as we say in, in England, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, with with where Crocus was going. I mean, we released Metal Rendezvous. That was my debut album with the band. And we were all over the charts in Europe. And when the question came... I was kind of uh, thrown aback, kind of, uh, sort of, um, well, I don't really need to, you know. Why should I join ACDC? They're not bigger than Crocus. They were not at the time. Yeah. And, and they were not making great... Uh, they, they had all, already started making shockwaves in England, which I wasn't even aware of. And to me, it was a band from Australia, which is a very, very far away place to go and rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you think of things practically. And I was being asked to step into someone else's shoes, not knowing if if a band's fans would accept me or not. And, and after all, I thought the status of Crocus was uh, pretty much... Uh, I was pretty happy with where we were and where we were going. And I just didn't want to uh, leave my new friends down and wanted to stay on the boat and keep on rocking and having fun. Basically, you know, it's, yeah. it's easy. <laughs> but of course, when you look at it today, people say, well, don't you regret it? Don't, didn't, you did a big mistake. I said, no, I, did, I didn't do a, mis a mistake. You know, it just so happened that uh, ACDC then became bigger, you know. Yeah. But uh, in my heart, I'm, I took the right decision. And the way things develop later is up to, you know, <laughs> up to the heavens, you know. <laughs> uh, it's up to destiny, you know. But I still have, thank God, I still have my health now. I have my voice. I'm still having fun. And I and I'm thankful for every new concert I can do. I I even had uh, the I was gifted to raise a family and have two healthy kids doing well at school, and they they have they do music as a hobby, and um, and Crocus is is back together and still going on. We're not as big as ACDC or even half as big, but you know. <laughs> Um, I mean, at a certain age, you you don't care if you're the biggest or the greatest. You just know, um, you just want to get through life and look back and say, well, it was fun. You know, we had our ups and downs, but it was fun. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, now that <laughs> you're back together with Crocus and everyone's on good terms, are you guys, you mentioned you were working on another album maybe? or Yeah, yeah. We're recording uh demos right now and um i go i go to solitern every week from basel it's only about uh, an hour away and i uh come back home with demos and you know put them away for a while and we'll always look forward work work on new stuff and it's fun and it's going where it should be going and as i said chris is back on board and Fernando and I are happy about that because now there's someone who can uh, anchor the band again and uh, we even uh, asked him to produce because uh, you know he's how can I say he established himself as uh, a successful producer in Switzerland in the meantime and so we've got it all on the same plate, you know, <laughs> in-house. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Yeah, we're re really looking forward to that, and we're glad that everything is so uh, working out for you. Do you have any parting words for us before we let you go? Well, um, I'd like to say that uh, we have still not forgotten the 80s. Crocus was really living it up, and uh, especially in the USA, and we haven't forgotten all the gigs we had with the 
hundreds of thousands of uh, American fans that we we had, and we know we still have uh, a lot of them out there, and we just love to return. And I guess you know we better do it soon because <laughs> we're only getting younger. <laughs> And then, um, so I guess we're going to be trying to make it back in the USA in 2013. And I hope we can come back to Minnesota. In the meantime, everybody stay healthy and uh, hang on in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, let's hope that, uh, that you love the new album. If you buy it, it's going to help us uh, even more to come over because then our record company will see that it's worth the investment. <laughs> That's right. how it works. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Lot, man. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. Anytime. Okay. <laughs> All right. You have a good night. You too. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.